and we're live. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to another live stream episode of Dogman Encounters. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you tuning in like this. Of course, for tonight's show, we're going to welcome Keith back. Of course, Keith was featured on last Friday night's episode of the show, as well as a special Monday night Christmas episode that aired. In those two shows, Keith highlighted, he chronicled encounter after encounter he's had with dog men. I thought to myself, you know what? I could ask him all the questions about those experiences, but you know what? Maybe it would be better if I just brought him on a live stream and gave you, the listeners, a chance to do that instead. So I asked him about coming on and doing a live stream. He accepted the invitation, and here we are. So just want to welcome Keith on now. Keith, thanks so much for doing this. Hey, welcome to be back. Well, it's great having you. It is. You had a lot of encounters, like I said, Keith, and in the description for tonight's show, I made a comment about how I hope all the listeners have a bunch of questions for you, because if they paid even so-so attention to all those experiences that you shared, they should have tons of questions for you, so we'll just have to wait and see how they did, but... I want to ask you a question before I start throwing questions at you from the listeners. And that question is something you kind of touched on in the first show that we did, but it kind of left a little bit of room for clarity. And that's why I wanted to ask you this again in kind of a different way. Obviously, most dogmen I witnesses, they'll have one encounter or maybe a couple in some cases, three, maybe four at the most. But with you, you've had encounter after encounter. What do you think it is about you that has caused you to have so many experiences with these guys? Well, you know, it's like I said, I I think it has a lot to do uh, with the native uh, ancestry. You know, these things have been around since the dawn of time from, you know, from what a lot of people are saying. And I think they can also, they can pick up on people's energies and stuff like that. You know, people that are respectful and, you know, kind or whatever, they may pick up, pick up on that. Um, people that are uh, weak or anything like that, they may pick up on it as well. And then people out there looking for a fight. Um, yeah, it's either they're going to engage or they'll try to stay away. Uh, luckily, in my case here, with what's running around in this area, uh, I believe too, they can also, they have a good sense of smell. They could probably smell gun oil. So being in a small area, what they are, I think they know better than to not pick a fight with uh, anybody that's out here. If that makes sense to you. Well, I can appreciate you feeling that way that it sounds like you're talking about guns being a deterrent. And if that's the case, I can appreciate your feelings on that. But, yeah, these guys, they normally don't have all that much respect for guns. They know what guns can do, and I'm sure they don't want to be shot. But if they really have their mind set on going someplace or doing something, then it doesn't really matter that much if you have a gun or not. I mean, I've spoken with very credible eyewitnesses who've unleashed some pretty formidable firepower on these guys without the desired response effect. So I can't explain that. Maybe they are demonic in nature. I really don't know. But, you know, they just don't seem to have all that much respect for them. Don't know why, but that's how it is. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, uh, but we never know. It's not like, unfortunately, it's not like we can come out and interview these these, uh, critters or not. But um, I think the majority of it, though, they can just pick up on your energy and that's why they don't mess with you yeah and that's the thing is these things move fast and quiet so even if you had that the superior firepower um if they wanted to ambush you i don't think there's any type of um response time anybody would have to counter it no it's pretty unlikely they would and i'm wondering listening to you chronicle those encounters you had I didn't hear one that sounded like it was traumatic for you. And with that in mind, I'm wondering, do you see the woods as being a better place because they're out there? They kind of add that 
that extra thrill to the woods and being in the woods? Or do you still see it as kind of a detriment to the woods, the fact that, yeah, they are out there? Man, that, that's that's a tough one. I, I think it just, um, I don't know, I guess it depends if, you know, if they're not wreaking havoc on livestock and everything like that, you know, uh, I think they're fine. I mean, they're just a part of nature. I mean, as far as I know, I mean, and the ones I run across, yeah, it seems more of they're, they're just of nature. I mean, I don't know how else to really put it. No, no, that does make sense. That does make good sense. Well, I've got the first question for you. It's kind of a bristly one, but when you consider how many encounters you've had, I can understand why people would just want clarity on this. And that question's from Matt Deacon, and Matt wants to know, Keith, are you really telling a true story? Oh, absolutely. This, um, There's no reason for me to BS anybody. I mean, that's that's a waste of my time. And it's a waste of everybody that's listening's time and of yours, Vic. There's there's no reason to be uh, lying about that stuff. It, even it would uh, compromise the integrity of other people that are in this field of the research. Even the Bigfoot community, it's there's no sense in BSing about it. <clears throat> Something I want to share with you, Matt. In most cases, when I have someone contact me who claims to have had so many experiences with dogmen, it makes me pretty darn suspicious. But I can tell you from the conversations I've had with Keith, where he told me about his experiences, to listening to him recount them again on the shows that we aired, his story hasn't changed on any of the encounters. I didn't hear one variation at all. It's just rinse and repeat. So if he is telling a tall tale, which I do not believe is the case, then I don't know how he does it so well. So, yeah, I most definitely do believe him. All right, we have another question for you from Phantom 9 And that question is, hi, Dogman's body movement seems to be more aligned towards the supernatural aspect. For instance, really, really fast movement. What are your thoughts? Do they maybe manipulate our perception? Thanks. Man, that's, uh, I don't know. I think in, in some instances, there may be a spiritual aspect to these guys. Um, that could have something to do with it. Do they manipulate our perception? Yeah, I think in a way they may. You know, it's some of the things that I've said and other documentaries that I've seen uh, where they do that weird frequency thing. Um, that could really uh, throw you off. I mean, that's, yeah, that's about what I got to say with that. Yeah, it's hard to put a finger on exactly what's behind that weird movement. So many credible eyewitnesses report seeing, I mean, maybe it does point towards them being ethereal beings, or maybe there's something else behind them moving like that. But yeah, I guess we're probably never going to know. Well, I've got another question for you from Darren, and Darren didn't type his question in all caps. So, Darren, that's a $20 fine right there. I do accept cash check and charge, so that makes it more, more uh, or easier to do, I should say, to pay the fine. But, no, I'm messing with you. Darren's question is, what's the closest you've been to one? Uh, well, that uh, comes from that uh, first episode. Um where I was literally face to face with something. Now I want to stand corrected. I think I said something about the military flashlight having a blue and green lens. It's actually a blue and red. That's what it give it that UV color. So when I hit the that silhouette or whatever this thing was, that was face to face. That was with the red eyes. That was like I said. I believe in that uh, encounter. If I'd have tried to punch it, I would have been too close. Um, but again, I don't know what it was. It had that, it had that shape. But anything outside of that that I could physically point out, no. So elbow distance, maybe. Um, but other than that, um, where I saw the full one at that 4:38 p.m. There's that number again. Um, that was about 10, 12 feet or so. Too close for comfort, definitely. All right, the next question would be from Board, 
That's an interesting name, screen name. His question or her question is, did a dog man ever follow Keith home? Um, no, I haven't haven't had any of those encounters. Now, like I said in the first episode, we had, I think it was the first episode, where we had the one that was at the end of my property um, by the uh, burning barrel. I wouldn't say it followed me home. Luckily, that whatever that one was that I saw with the red eyes that was very close distance, that was down the street. That didn't follow me home. Um, however, I think it was on last episode, I talked about how the wife saw that black wolf thing that kind of faded away here at our house now. Um, I don't think that followed me from anywhere, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah, it's hard to know if it did follow you. All you can do is guess. Well, the next question is from Taser Survivor. That doesn't sound like a good experience. <laughs> and their question is, does he believe dogmen are shapeshifters? Well, first off, Taser Survivor. I guess everybody needs a hobby. <laughs> I love that name. Um, can they be shapeshifters? I think it would depend on kind you're running across um if it's one of the uh spiritual ones or something like that yeah i could see them being able to say phase in phase out whatever um but as far as we'll say uh the hollywood-esque werewolf dogman thing where it, it it transforms from a human to uh, a critter i i i don't really put much real estate in that Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. I'm never going to say it's not possible, but unless I saw that, I'd have a really hard time believing that there could actually be werewolves out there. So, like I said, I'm not saying it can't be true, but it's one of those things I would just have to see to believe it. All right, the next question is from, well, I guess it's a comment from Matt Deacon again, and he says, thanks for both of your responses. Absolutely fascinating. Well, I'm glad. I, I hope it helped out for you and stuff like that. And, you know, I feel with it. Um, we run across a lot of stories here and there. And like I said, it, it just it trashes the integrity of this whole community. I mean, how many people are in this community throughout the world? Why make them look like idiots? Because, you know, people tend to generalize everybody with each other. Yes, that they do. All right, the next question is from Glades Creature, and their question is, have you ever seen one wearing clothing? No rips or shreds, cause I did. Um, No, that I, I have not. That would, man, <laughs> I don't even know how I, how I would take that. And man, that's that's crazy. I'd love to hear that story. Yeah, that would be interesting, definitely. <laughs> Well, it looks like Taser Survivor has a comment to share. He says, or she says, I was face to face with one in the early 1980s as a preteen. That's not good. Yeah, that's, uh, again, I would love to hear um, the stories on these, these, these questions I'm seeing and then the comments. I'd love to hear some of these people's stories. Well, you just might someday. You never know. Well, it looks like the next question is from C Phantom 009, and that question is, Hi, Keith, anything that would come to mind regarding a particular feeling or weird anomaly that comes before or during an encounter? Thank you. Uh, let's see. It comes before. I'm just reading the question again. Um, before an encounter, I would say sometimes you get that, you know, the feeling of, you know, ooh, something's watching me. You hear you hear that time and time again. Get that. It's almost it's like a primal type feeling or whatever. It it it'll stop you dead in your tracks. Um during an encounter, um, yeah, there's that adrenaline. Yeah, it's um because again, it's regardless of if these things are small, like the one that we had out there in the park where I came up to it or whatever, you know, or the one that was under the tree. That was small and that was intimidating. The the one where I said it, it, it said something like come closer, or, come here or whatever. Um, yeah, a little bit of anxiety. 
That's only natural, though. Even if your experience isn't traumatic, it's just natural that your your adrenaline is going to get pumping and flowing whenever you have an experience with a dog man. I mean, how can't it? So that's what I would expect. All right. The next question is from Nada Nada. And that question is, Keith, have you ever seen any other cryptid besides dog men? Um, uh, I don't know. And that's that's where uh, I was talking in the last episode with that. Uh, God, what was it? I think it's the 14th of this month, 15th, something like that. Um, there is that weird, tall, lanky, deer headed freak looking thing that was out at my house that kind of it walked between a couple sets of trees and disappeared. Um, other than that, any other types of sightings I've seen were more uh, paranormal outside of cryptic. No Bigfoot, though. It's crazy. I've never seen a Bigfoot. Well, maybe it's a, a leap, but I think it's just a matter of time for you to have your first Sasquatch sighting as well. You sure seem to be a magnet, and I yeah, wouldn't be surprised in the least. Well, well the next... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, one thing I was thinking is like I think a Bigfoot saw me. I got this shirt that says uh, "Bigfoot stole my beer" up from uh, Tequamanon Falls Brewery. Yeah, it knows I got a beef with it, so it's going to leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. They're pretty big and pretty strong, so I don't know. I guess that's left to be seen. Well, the next question is from Darren, and Darren wants to know: Have you ever seen a rake? Hmm, let me think about that for a quick second. No, and thank God. I've heard the horror stories from some of your past guests. Uh, yeah, that's something I don't want to deal with. Yeah, I can't say I blame you there. All right. The next question is from C Phantom 009 And that question is, Hi, Keith. Considering the UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, do you believe there's a connection to dogman sightings? Does anything out of the ordinary come to your mind? Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's anything uh, connected as far as a legitimate con connection, um, actually being something uh, ET in nature. Now, could there be some, some correlation between UAPs and dogmen that may or may not, depends on who's listening, be a governmental type thing. I could possibly see something like that. But um, as far as the legitimate UAP and connections, I'm, I'm not too sure on that. Yeah, that's one of those things. It's really hard to know. All you can do is guess. All right, the next question would be from Jackie Smith and... She wants to know, Keith, do you believe numerology has meaning or just coincidence? Um, unfortunately, I can't really comment on that. I'm really not too up on it, so I don't uh, want to give a misleading answer. I'm, I'm sorry about that. All right, fair enough. The next question is from Boomer Thummer, Boomer Thumer. And that question is, do you think the dog man can mind speak? Oh, yeah, it's, I, I don't see why they couldn't. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of uh, encounters and witnesses that says they can mind speak. Uh, like I said on the, the one encounter I had with that small one, um, I believe that was more of a, a verbal audio. But, yeah, I can see it happening. Yeah, there are a lot of credible eyewitnesses who report experiencing it, so seems like there's something to that. Definitely does. All right, the next question would be from Mio Di Rio, and that's just a general question that isn't really a good question to throw at Keith. Keith isn't a researcher. He's not a dogman researcher, so let's try to keep the questions focused on his experiences. Mio de Rio's question is, do dogmen use traveling through trees, like riding tree from tree to tree? And the answer is yes, they do that sometime. 
it's kind of hard to understand how something as big as they are could do that, but they do it. All right, Keith, the question, the next question for you is from Taser Survivor again. And that question is, does Keith believe they there are different breeds of dog men? Hmm. Um, again, that's one of multiple witnesses are showing all these different uh, types, if you will, the type three and type whatever. I, I'm not too sure. But I mean, there's got to be some some truth to that, that there is actually different breeds. The ones I've run across, uh, for the most part, oh, yeah, I guess so. Because a couple of them that I saw that were standing up, they, like I said before, they had the, like the normal human type legs. Um, not bending backwards or anything like that, you know, people say or whatever, dog style uh, um, you know, movements or anything like that. I've seen a couple of those. They were more upright like we are. And then the other ones were more hunched over. But yeah, so there's got to be different types of breeds. Yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. All right, the next question is from Chris Sirk. And Chris's question is, Keith, have you seen any glowing orbs moving around before an encounter? Um, no, that I have not. I got enough glowing orbs running around my house. <laughs> I don't see them out in the woods or anything where these, uh, where the critters are at, unfortunately. Um, a lot of times it was daytime, didn't see them. Nighttime, I don't know. I, I never saw orbs and got that type of feeling like there was something there, like that primal feeling like I was talking about in the uh, few questions back. All right, fair enough. The next question would be from Lone Star Supernatural, and that question is, do you think these things are dangerous or just complacent with living next to us? Um, man, how would I? They can be. I mean, you even look at humans. I mean, you get the nicest people, and they all have their breaking point. I mean, that's one of these things is where if you go out there, you're looking for a fight or something like that, either A, they'll totally avoid you, or if they engage you, we may or may not hear about your existence anymore at that point. Um, I think it's just a question of whether or not people want to push these things buttons or not. But um, other than that, I do believe, too, that uh, being complacent living next to us, I think in some instances, you know, you get that mob mentality with people last thing you want is a whole you know pitchforks and torches out there trying to hunt these things down so they probably just i say keep more of a low key yeah if you go into the woods for whatever reason i can't wrap my mind around why you would but if you do head into the woods and you want to try and pick a fight with a dog man and they oblige you then yeah that's when things get really sideways awfully quick not good <laughs> yeah. All right, the next question is from Ragnarokker, and their question is, do you think there's any connection between werewolves and dogmen? Oh, boy. Um, that goes right in there, whether or not this turns it from a person to a critter or not, or whatever, dogmen. I think they just are how they are. Uh, for werewolf, if it's anything like that maybe that's something that was um manufactured um you know like i say gmos are not good for you that would be a something that's genetically modified all right the next question is from c phantom 009 and that question is hi keith any comments regarding dog man's behavior when cameras are present and during the night with illuminated areas thank you oh uh, cameras are present i've never put any out so i can't really comment on that um my belief opinion if you will even with the the sasquatch or whatever i think with a lot of these these sensors that are used in infrared lighting and everything, I think they can see it. I mean, I think that's why you don't see as many on camera 
as you would anticipate. That and I believe that they see you come into the woods when you go to hang a game cam on a tree trunk. I mean, that is if they're in the area. And also, too, if you lived in that woods for any appreciable amount of time, then you're going to notice certain things when they're out of place. A knob sticking out of a tree trunk or just something that doesn't look right. So maybe that's got something to do with it, too. We'll never know, but that would make sense. All oh, right, the next... I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a very good point there, Vic. And too, and you know, uh, these people are putting putting these cameras up. What are they touching it with? Clothing that may have our scent on it. Bare hands that definitely has our scent on it. If these things have a you know an excellent sense of smell, yeah, they probably pick up on it. It only makes sense, and I'm sure they can smell better than a bloodhound. It wouldn't surprise me. Every other sense and ability on these guys is jacked through the roof. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Well, the next question is from Werewolf Saves, and that question is, do you think dogmen have killed people and are responsible for missing people? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what percentage. I, I, would, I would assume it to be very low unless it's – one of those uh, GMO critters that are getting a hold of stuff like that, uh, that Joe Barger incident that was up in Manistee. Um, with that, yeah, I could see them uh, preying more on hunters that are out in the North Woods somewhere that's very isolated. But as far as any significant amount, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's another one of those that falls into the category of all we can do is guess on that. There's no real way to know. Maybe someday we'll get a better idea on that, but I've got no idea how far down the road that's going to be. All right, the next question is from Glades Creature, and that question is, have you ever heard of a crazy mist associated with dog men? Uh, yeah. In fact, that was I didn't mention this in any of the episodes or whatever. But in that issue where it was uh it was uh it was July of oh four, I was turning on to that that side road going down to where that cabin was at. And at one point there was actually a black fog, if you will, in, in the road. And up on the embankments, normally your lights would hit it. This my lights did not penetrate this fog. It was weird, it was just black. So, yeah, I had a run in with that. I just, I didn't say anything. It kind of sent shivers up my spine a little bit when I saw that question. Good question. Yeah, I'll bet it did send shivers up your spine. The next question is from Darren, and Darren wants to know, have you ever heard of dog me in hell? Um, I would have to say that is what I heard uh, when there was that, uh, Part of that episode where I was saying what the coyotes had come in and then there was something that was considerably larger and more aggressive sounded, kind of like that deep guttural death metal beast or whatever I called it. If that was a dog man, yeah, then definitely. And then I've heard stuff up in the UP and everything. So it's just one of those things I chose not to uh, go investigate. Probably a good move, too, not to investigate it. Well, the next question is kind of related. Taser Survivor wants to know if you've ever heard one growl. Oh, growl? Yeah, and it's 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 that thing there where you can, not only did I hear it a little bit, but I, I felt it more. I mean, it was almost uh, it on a subsonic level or something. It just, inside your body, you felt it rattle. It was crazy. That's just, in fact, with that last question, um, that was one thing that I said is you could feel it even at that distance. It was far away, but so yeah, it was, it was almost the same uh, internal feeling or primal feeling, whatever you want to call it. All right. The next question is from Rob Mack and Rob wants to know, do you think dog men could be a hybrid? Um, yeah. I mean, dog men from what I've, encountered i think they're the el natural i mean that's that's been around forever the hybrids i would see them being more of a uh, 
yeah, more of a GMO type thing that people disappear and government says you kill an asset and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, I can see that. All right. Well done. The next question is from C Phantom 009, and their question is Hi, Keith. Do your encounters portray a sense of protection provided by dogmen or a deeper connection to them? Um, the protection thing, uh, like the wife had here with the one, uh, the, the larger black one, she got a sense of protection from it. Um, the, the thing that I said with the animal sacrifices in a crazy house and everything like that, where I don't know. I guess it would say like the dogmen were kind. Of, they frowned upon it if you went near that house. So, in the way I look at it, yeah, it's it's a protective thing. Now that doesn't mean all of them are protective by any means. I mean, you hear people disappear. You had to try to get me to come closer. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. That's not a protective thing at that point. It's good you know that. I see a question here that wasn't typed in all caps people complain all the time about me missing questions wolf please be sure if you have a question for keith or any guest you always type it in all caps that'll make it a lot less likely for me to miss them this question is from juliana mcgill and juliana wants to know or basically it's a, a statement the real question would be do they practice selective breeding do you have any opinions on that um the natural ones I don't know. It's I'm not too sure. I think they just they're just natural. They do what they do. But as far as the uh, GMOs, yeah, they probably have some type of enhancements with that. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, the next question is from Rappy, and Rappy wants to know, it looks like Rappy's question's not in all caps. Guys, like I said, if you have a question, please be sure to type it in all caps so I don't miss it. I almost went right past this one. And Rappy's question is, Vic, can you ask Keith, have any dogmen been caught, or can they be? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, and I'm really not one to go out and try. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, I'm good on that. I don't know. I don't think they can be. Yeah, that's one of those questions where it's just so hard to know. It really is. All right. The next question is from Wes Terry. And Wes's question is, Keith, would you go again to that same area again or just stay clear of the area? Uh, as far as the parks, I still go in the parks or whatever. Um the the one area I kind of just stay out of where the, the creepy ranger station is at or whatever, I just maintain myself to the parking lot. And if I have to use the, the bathroom, they had that little pavilion area. And then the moat area, I stay in there. And there's something there that's in those woods that it, it's a respectful thing. I have no urge to go back in those those areas. But as far as the, the metro parks and stuff, yeah, I, I go in there. You've got a lot of seeing, Keith, to have half as many experiences, a fourth of the experiences as you've had, and to continue to just go back into the woods all the time the way you do, you can't be faint of heart and do that. So, like I said, you've definitely got sand. All right, the next question is from Brian Wright, and Brian's question is, did you know that less than three-fourths of a mile from that park, there are three Indian mounds? Oh, no, that I did not know. However, um, I know there are some, I used, for the people that know this area, I mean, I used to live off of Hickory Ridge Road, North End, out, uh, you know, heading towards Rose Township. Um, I knew there was some stuff back in those woods there, uh, north of 59, and I ran across some mounds back there, but back in these parks, no, I, I never really got into that end of it, actually, but it wouldn't surprise me. Well, you can't be faulted for that. You know, it is people live right next to the Statue of Liberty and never visit it, even though they've lived in Manhattan for 40 years. There's just no way to know about, of course, those people know about the Statue of Liberty, but you can live in an area and not know about the Indian mounds that might be around and things like that. So, yeah, no harm, no foul on that. All right. The next question is from Lone Star Supernatural, and that question is, what do you think they are? 
Uh, there are a lot of different things. I mean, it depends on what you're running across. I, I, I've dealt a little bit with the more spiritual. God, I hate saying paranormal, but that's the only way I can kind of describe it. I've seen the flesh and blood ones with the critters. That was the majority of the ones that I've seen. And of course we have, you know, we have something that may or may not be created somewhere and let loose. So it depends on which one you run across. All right. The next question is from C Phantom 009. And that question is, hi, Keith, what other animal or creature would you say dog man's behavior is the closest to? I I think it's it it depends on the situation. Now, uh, the ones that I saw at the uh, the cabin with the party and everything like that, they're running around like fools. I think I referred to them as almost acting like squirrels running around chasing each other. They acted like that, but there's some. I I think maybe more wolf, but the one too that that happened when I was sledding. That acted almost cat-like. I mean, as far as like a, any type of cat, any size of cat, because that one was kind of low to the ground. It turned towards me and kind of hunched down like a cat would. And it just had that that look to it. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, I think it does. That would be awfully creepy to see it do that, moving that way. Wow. All right. The next question is from Shamborsi, and that question is, Hi, Keith. When Dogman growled, or when the Dogman growled, did it make your body freeze? Yeah, it's 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 almost like that uh, that feeling. It's just that you're walking along, walking along, and all of a sudden, uh-oh, and you just kind of like freeze in your tracks. It's like that, but it's more internal if that makes sense. It's something, I think I said it earlier, it's more primal feelings. Something kicks on in a brain that's not normally used on a daily basis. All right. The next question is from Darren, and his question is, would you ever consider mounting a camera on your back like Scott Carpenter did? Yeah, that's no problem. In fact, I'm sitting about five feet away from a GoPro 10 right now. It'd be nothing for me to do it, but Unfortunately, uh, another thing too, uh, getting back in the woods, I do when I can, but due to some health issues, it's uh, getting more and more difficult. But um, if I was to go out on some even ground, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem to do that. Yeah, it does make you wonder what you'd catch. They're definitely around your area, really thick, so who knows what you might catch on camera. This next question has already been answered. Hi, Tammy. Thanks so much for your question. But so that you know, about 10 minutes ago or so, someone asked this in a different way. Tammy Huggins' question is, do you think dogmen have telepathic abilities? And Keith basically said he's open to the idea that it just might, but he hasn't experienced anything like that. All right. And then moving on to the next question, that would be from... I think I lost my place here. All right, here we go. From C Phantom 009, and he says, Hi, Keith. Considering the encounters, even if Dogman's reaction seems aggressive or violent, do you believe they could still give the green light to an encounter just to show their presence? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, the buddy I went sledding with, he, he ran across one. It, I, he called it a red. It's... Again, it was like kind of like that Irish setter color. And he went out there. He was one of the guys looking for a fight. Went out there with weapons and stuff. And, um, yeah, they, it was waiting for him. That's the only way I can put it. It it knew where he was going, and it was waiting for him. So, yeah, I could see them uh, having no problem pushing you back out of their area. No, they don't. If they don't want you there, they <laughs> do what they want, basically. All right. This is kind of like a general question. I don't know that you would know this, the answer to this question. But James Escobar wants to know, do dogmen and Sasquatch fight over territory and resources? It's been alleged that they do for some pretty credible resources, but I don't know if anyone has actually caught that on film. So it's really hard to know for sure about that. 
All right. The next question is from Darren. And Darren wants to know, would you consider bringing someone with you? Yeah, that, that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it's, it's been some time since uh, uh, that I've run across any. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be an issue. All right. The next question is from Werewolf Saves. And that question is, do you think using a firearm would increase or decrease your chances of surviving an encounter? Um, I guess it would depend on the size of the critter you're dealing with, how close you are, how good of a shot you are, and what caliber of a uh, firearm you have. I think chances of survival, I think it, if something's going to engage you that's intent on putting an end to you, it would be more of an act of God to get you out of that situation. I don't even care if you had a something chambered in 50 BMG. If something wanted to get a hold of you, um, yeah, it would. Well spoken. Yeah, you're at such a disadvantage out there in the woods with these guys. If they want to get to you, no matter what you're carrying in your hands, they can get to you. And that's all there is to it. So, yeah, well said. All right. The next question is kind of another general question from Rosie Rose. And she wants to know, are they in Indiana? Yes, they most definitely are. I fielded quite a few reports from people in Indiana who've seen them. I think I've had a couple of guests on the show, too, who talked about their experiences there, including Greg Yost, a very prominent Sasquatch researcher from Indiana. All right. The next question is another general question from Carl. And Carl wants to know, do you know of any dog men, it should be any dog men in the UK? Yeah, we've had a bunch of shows, episodes of dog men encounters where people came on from the UK and they talked about their encounters that happened there. All right. The next question, or I guess is a comment from Carl. Love your channel, Vic. Well, we love you, Carl. Thanks so much for listening. We love all the listeners. All right. The next question is from Ski Mask. And that question is, if dog men could drive, would they drive their dog women insane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I wouldn't want to be in that household. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. It looks like I have a comment here from someone from Indiana or someone who lived in Indiana one time. And it says, it's from Sam Hine 11. And they said, I had my first encounter in Indiana. So there you go, Rosie. <laughs> That's your answer right there. All right. The next question is from SR. And that question is, have you ever experienced infrasound? If so, can you describe it? That I'm not sure what that is. So I, I can't give a actual answer with that. Unless that's that stuff where it resonates deep in your body from these things. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure on what that is. Sorry. No need to apologize. I mean, all you can do is all you can do. Well, I've definitely got a question here for you, Keith, from Wiseman91 that you have to answer for us. And that question, it's a really easy question to answer. That question is, why don't we have HD pictures or video of Dogman? Oh, yeah, that's like I said in the uh, one of the episodes, it's at least in my personal experiences, when I'm dealing with this stuff, I'm not taking my eyes off it. And I could have a GoPro stuck to my forehead and wouldn't even think to turn it on. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's uh, you get that adrenaline rush, um, depending on how it's acting. Uh, you may be turning tail and running or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, I think some of these instances, it just doesn't come to mind. At least for me, it doesn't. I mean, I don't, I don't even really carry a camera too much when I'm out in the woods, you know, as far as anything outside my phone. But yeah, I think it is. It's just the heat of the moment type thing. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I've seen an accident play out before me on the street but I didn't pull a camera out and try to take a picture of it. And what happened to you when you had your experiences and other people, it's just the last thing you're going to think about is pulling out a camera 
to try and snap a photo. Now, people who have them living around their homes and in other situations like that where it's an extended experience, then yeah, you might think about pulling out a, a phone or a camera to take a picture, but in most situations, people aren't going to think about that at all. And I can tell you, yes, I have seen very good HD photos of dog men. I have seen film footage, amazing blow your socks off film footage of dog men or a dog man. Well, no, I guess that's plural, dog men. So yes, there are HD photos of dog men out there. There are very high quality pieces of film footage out there showing them. Most people who have that evidence don't put it out there and for good reason, for public consumption. Because of various reasons, they they don't put them out there not wanting to, to draw down bad attention on themselves. But just because you haven't seen these pieces of evidence, that does not mean that they're not out there because, yeah, they definitely are. All right. The next question would be from Darren. I guess he already asked that about if you would take him along with you someday. You said you would be open to that. Well, let's see. The next question would be from Nico Diaz. And Nico's question is, why do you think they tend to be attracted to certain individuals? Um something spiritual they 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 can feel your 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 intent that's what i was looking for yeah energy intent i think they can uh pick up on that when you're out in the woods again it's one of those things is if they i wouldn't say if when you go out in the woods and they decide to come near you if they do or whatever um yeah they they know all about you i mean that's how they can pick up on it it's, it's very primal. It's the only way I can put it. They do so many things like that. They're so hard to explain. Yeah, it really does seem like they can read your mind and know what kind of mindset you have at that time. Of course, if you go into the woods with a negative mindset, if you're sad, if you're mad, for some reason that does seem to increase the odds of you having an encounter with these guys. I don't know why, but that does seem to be the case. All right, the next question is from Wes Terry, and that question is, hello again, Keith. Did you get a feeling of fear, and if so, did it go away when it left? Um, fear, no. Um, when I ran across these things, I was like, uh-oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. And that was, that was my cue to leave on any of these instances, especially with the one um, at the cabin party thing that wanted me to come closer and the one that uh kind of crouched down behind me it was yeah I, I just need to leave and they didn't leave i did that's a stage left all right the next question is from werewolf saves and that question is keith do you think jesus has protected you when you had your encounters oh yeah absolutely there's there's no doubt about that you know that's I've had friends that's dealt with these, um, and they are of different backgrounds um, on a on a spiritual or religious sense like that, and they've they've had less than positive encounters with some of these things. Me myself, uh, yeah, good Lord's, I think watching me, I'm blessed, and I either got my own personal angel standing behind me, going, no, uh, uh. Or I, heck, I could even have uh, Archangel Michael sitting there, same thing, no one. Uh -uh. With all the encounters you've had without a scratch, maybe Michael, Gabriel, and your own guardian angel too, and <laughs> who knows what kind of protection you must have. It's hard to say. All right, the next question is from M. Michael, and M. Michael wants to know, do you think Dogman could be something other than canine? like feline, large rodent? Oh, okay. Um, canine, yeah, that's definitely the only thing I've dealt with as far as feline. I've heard some stories about it. Um, again, the one that crouched down behind me, when that did its thing, that was cat-like. Uh, large rodents, or large rodent type, I got no comment on that one because I'm going to leave major cities out of it. But, yeah, it's going to be a smart aleck with that. But that I don't know on the rodent thing. Yeah, I hope there's not a 
a rat man running around out there. That would be good. <laughs> or okay. a mouse man. Can I make a comment real quick, Vic? Sure, by all means. Uh, that just reminds me that large rodent, for some reason, uh, someone had made a comment earlier when we were uh, on one of the episodes when I was talking about the movie, the humanoids from the, from the deep, and then someone put out, what about Chud? That's another classic movie. Love it. And that's what just come to my mind was, yeah, watch Chud. <laughs> wow, I'm embarrassed to say I knew about Chud. For some reason, I haven't ever watched that one either. I really need to get on the ball, don't I? Oh, man, I'm a former former hazmat worker. So those guys paying homage down in the sewers to the toxic waste, that was right up my alley. I could have been one of those guys in a past life. <laughs> yeah, you could have been the Toxic Avenger. And it looks like I've got a... A message from my buddy, Mike Colantonio from Long Island, Bigfoot. He said, good evening, Brother Vic. And yeah, I just wanted to post that and say hi right back to you, Mike. If you have any interest in listening to Bigfoot-related content, I'm going to highly recommend that you go and do a search on YouTube for the Long Island Bigfoot YouTube channel because Mike does a really good job. He's the true essence of a boots-on-the-ground Sasquatch researcher and of course, he's already been on Dogman Encounters to talk about his Dogman Encounters that he's had as well. But, yeah, the guy is definitely top-notch. All right, moving on. The next question is from C. Teagues, and that question is, have you ever found any footprints or handprints, for that matter, from a Dogman? Um, the only time... <coughs> excuse me. The only time that I saw... Any type of footprints, there was just a couple of them. And that was, I believe that was December of 04, as when my girlfriend's friend had a breakdown and we had to go jumpstart her vehicle. And when I come back to put my jumper cables away, there were a couple large prints that were in the snow um, that wasn't there when I looked before. Um, the size of them, oh man. I'm not not good with horses, but like a draft horse, something large. It was probably roughly the same size in that, but purely canine. Um, I didn't see any uh, heel prints. That's one thing, you know, I think I had made mention to it as where you have the, where it looks more human with the claws and everything. I didn't see that. These were just large canine paw prints, two of them. All right. The next question is from C Phantom 009 and he says, Hi Vic and Keith. Any books or documentaries that you would recommend in order to learn more about Dogman and its behavior? Thank you for the phenomenal answers. As far as books or documentaries, there are plenty of them out there, and I don't really think any stand above and beyond the rest as far as being of better quality, so yeah, just be skeptical of what you read. There's a lot of good info out there about dogmen, but it's also a lot of bad info as well. How about you, Keith? Have you ever, have you ever read any books about dogmen, seen any documentaries about them that, that you liked and were impressed by? Um, no, I haven't. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for this question. It's a good question. I just I don't have anything on that. All right, no harm, no foul there. And Darcy's Drive Ventures wants to know, Vic, couldn't you post those HD pictures of Dogman anon anonymously in no location? Well, I could if I didn't respect the person's wish or the people's wishes who submitted those to me. Yeah, the people with these pictures, they do not want them put out there. And the last thing I'm going to do is betray that trust. So, no, I could do it, but I'm not going to do that. All right. The next question is from Tammy Huggins, or I guess it's a comment. She says, I've had dreams of dogmen talking to me. Yeah, that's not a good kind of dream. That's borderline nightmare territory right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear, I hear on that. Man, I've had a handful of them. In fact, one, I think it was yesterday morning, and the wife has had quite a few. And um, crazy enough, it's... They were polar opposite of what she experienced here. Um, they were horrible. Yeah, sorry to hear about that. Most dog man dreams are not nightmares and aren't very pleasant. So, yeah, I'm 
Sure, they were pretty unpleasant. <laughs> All right. The next question is kind of like a general question from Stephen Jones. And that question is, do dogmen make structures? People have alleged that they do, but I have yet to talk with anyone who told me about actually seeing a dogman build a structure. So we don't know. All we can do is guess really on that. All right. Take that down. And the next question would be from Christofferson. And that question is, do you think dogmen indulge in playtime or activities? Uh, yeah, why not? On, on their time where they're not being hunted down by the random fool trying to be a hero. I mean, yeah, I, they probably just screw around like everything else. Got to pass the time somehow. So it only makes sense. All right, the next question is from Darren, and Darren wants to know, what's the biggest one you've seen? Oh, man, there's there's been a few, and they all range for the most part. I mean, the bigger ones, man, six to seven feet is usually about where they run. And now I don't know if they're fully extended on their, you know, on their legs or not, or crouching too much or anything like that, but I think usually about uh, about the six to seven foot range, um, muscular. Uh, so if I had to put a weight on them, probably be between 400, 450 ballpark. And yeah, that's what I got on that. I mean, I haven't seen any of the the big GMO ones, thank God. Like, you know, that the issue there in the Manistee State Forest issue with the truck driver. But, um, yeah, about that size. So, yeah, six, seven feet. Yeah, that's a pretty common size for them. A juvenile, in other words. All right, the next question is from Hans Baracho, and his question is, how likely is it that these creatures are extra-dimensional? Well, I, I think they can be. I mean, uh, with the ones for the most part, I will say, uh, we're more what I would assume to be flesh and blood. But, uh, Vic, I think that'd be a, a better question for you on that one. Well, there have been a lot of credible eyewitnesses reporting seeing these guys do things that point soundly towards them being extra dimensional. But maybe they are flesh and blood creatures who have the ability somehow to hop dimensions. Maybe they are flesh and blood creatures that have other abilities that allow them to do what they do that makes us think that they must be extra dimensional, but they're not. So I don't know. That just falls into the category again of all we can do is just guess on that. It's really hard to, to know for sure what the answer is on that. All right. The next question would be from, wow, this is a screen name for the ages here. Walter GSW, a bunch of numbers, BA7TRES. And that question is, have you heard of Dogmen in El Salvador? I grew up hearing stories. And that's more of a general question, of course. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they are there. I've had a guest on or two in neighboring countries, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I don't think I've ever had anyone on from El Salvador. I could be wrong about that, though. It's really hard to know. And I saw a question earlier in the chat. It wasn't in all caps. But someone was asking, how about Catman? Is there a Catman out there? Yeah, if you go to the other one of the other podcasts I produce called My Paranormal Experience, episode 18. On episode 18, this lady talked about this Catman that she saw in Florida crossing a road. She said it was a, a jet black, nine foot tall Catman. So, yeah, there are credible eyewitnesses who report seeing them. I guess I could say, unfortunately, <laughs> wouldn't want to run into one either. But anyway, the next question would be from Eric Spinner. And Eric's question is, could it be misidentification of a Bigfoot? As far as what I, I, I ran across, they were too close. And for the most part, except with exception to the two, um, they had the, the dog hind end and the extended snouts. 
That's an answer right there. Yeah, it's all too common for people who don't know much about the dog man phenomenon to think, okay, well, yeah, more than likely, it's just a case of mistaken identity. These are Sasquatch that people are seeing. And I can appreciate that thought, but if you don't know much about the Sasquatch phenomenon, then you wouldn't know that there are tons and tons of eyewitnesses out there who have been in handshaking distance of these guys. And, you know, they see the hawks instead of heels and the stifled joints instead of knees, the degenerate style leg structure, like you just said, dog-like legs that Sasquatch clearly don't have. They are face to face with the muzzles and the sharp teeth. And yeah, it's just situations where there is no room there for a mistaken identity case. No, they saw what they saw and in so many of these cases, it could not have been mistaken identification. All right. The next question would be from, I guess it's more of a comment, from Jonathan Wright. And he says, dogmen were created by Zetas or the tall whites. Well, we don't know that for sure. That's just a postulation there. There's a difference between a postulation and fact. All right. The next question is from Walter GSW. And that question is, have you heard of dog man? Oh, it's the same question. He asked again. All right. Take that down. And the next question is from Nico Diaz. And that question is, do you think they can manipulate your dreams? Dreams are very lucid when they appear in your sleep. Oh, yeah. The Some of the dreams that I've had, there's actually been... And I, I know this that the 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 communication was telepathic. There was, it was so vivid. Man, that's a very good, very good question. It was so vivid that I could tell these these beings. Uh, they did not move their mouths when they communicated, and it was in English and everything like that. It was clear as day in my dreams do i remember what they said no unfortunately but yeah i can see that all right the next question is from long island bigfoot aka mike and that question is do you have a new fear of the woods or just newfound healthy respect as far as the fear of the woods no that was oh man the howling god <laughs> that movie that brought up memories um, back until I was about like 14 or 15 or so, I stayed the heck out of the woods. Thanks to that movie. Um, as far as a new, newfound respect, healthy respect. Yeah. You know, and as, as I get older, you know, just like hopefully with everyone else, you know, you, you get a more, get more respect and stuff like that for certain things. And, um, yeah, definitely with being out in the woods, it's, it's nice, especially, when you can just shut up for two seconds and just listen to everything. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. That movie, the howling that really left an impression on you, didn't it? Man, it, you know, after we had this conversation, even our, you know, our initial interview, man, it, I didn't realize how much of an issue that was. I mean, it, it kind of got away from me and then it brought it up. And then I, you know, I had to go and watch it back again, watch those scenes. Oh my Lord. Yeah. It, it, it really did. It, uh, yeah, it kind of messed me up. I, was, I guess I put it in a crawl space for all these years. Yeah. That is a creepy movie. That one scene, I'm not sure if it's the first howling or maybe the second one or another one after that, but there's a scene in one of them, I'm pretty sure it's from the first one, where I think there's a guy in a computer lab or something, and one of the werewolves transformed, and it comes up and grabs the guy by the shoulders, and it picks him up, and it's like face to face with him, snarling in his face. Man, if that doesn't make the hair in your butt stand up, I don't know what will. Yeah, you know what, man, I was just thinking about that, too, and I just, I vaguely remember one of them, one of the werewolves in that movie just kind of looking at the guy and shaking their finger back and forth like, uh-uh-uh, or something like that, and I was like, man, that's what that reminded me of when you said that. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> creepy, too, the idea they could do that. 
All right, C Phantom 009 has another question. He says, Hi Keith, where do you think dogmen prefer to lay down to rest? Caves, dens, trees, etc. Yes. <laughs> That's there you go. I think they 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 lay down where they're they're very uh concealed and stuff like that. That's that's my view on it. I've never walked walked up on a den or anything like that. And so at night I wouldn't know I wouldn't go out there at night. Did that once, that was enough. Oh, I'm sure it was <clears throat> enough. Yeah. Glad you got away with doing that without a scratch. The next one's a comment from Darcy Drive Ventures and she just basically said, Vic, it makes sense when they specifically ask you not to post their pictures. Respectful. Well, thanks for saying that, but yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, when these people confide in you with their experiences, the least I can do is to respect their wishes, to remain anonymous, and not to share evidence that they, they share with me if they don't want that evidence put out there. So, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. All right. The next question is from Hans Baracho, and that question is, Keith, how many dangerous... I don't understand this question. I guess I'll have to try and ad-lib this. How dangerous is Middle Tennessee regarding the number of dogmen, I guess is the best way to, to put this. Um, I don't know how many are down there. I know I, I got, you know, I should ask my buddy. He, he lives down there and he's more on the east end, like towards Knoxville or whatever. Uh, but I've only been in Tennessee once, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, the wife and I are really contemplating retiring down there. Man, we love that place. Oh my God, it's a beautiful state. <laughs> Sorry, got off the got off the got off the trail there a little bit, but I don't know. Not sure. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> the next one's from Patrick Reagan, and Patrick's question is: Do dogmen come out more often during a full moon? Um, I don't know. I think that's more of a Hollywood thing, or you know, there could be something associated with uh, stuff that has happened in a in the past. I mean, it could be folklore stuff. I don't know about that. I never really paid attention. I was too busy looking at what I was looking at. <laughs> All right, easy enough. The next question is from Walter GSW, and Walter wants to know, have you heard of dog? No, well, it's the same question that he asked several times before. We've addressed that. So let's see. The next question is from hound and hound wants to know if there were dog if there were a dog man band what kind of music would they play well yeah that's anyone's guess there so we'll move on to the next question <laughs> <laughs> from sam high and 11 which is have you seen a white one with blue eyes i've seen some with blue eyes and i think i regarded it to a uh, if you look them up it's called a sky blue topaz that was the color of the eyes. Um, have I run across the white one? I don't know if it was white or light gray. Um, the, the time that I saw one by the burning barrel, that was either a white or a light gray. I think it was light gray. And then the one that chased my buddy out, uh, out of that Dodge Park um, that was down in by that swamp. Yeah, white, very, very light gray, if that. And I, I think there's another name for those. I saw it one time on a short i don't remember what they called them but it was something different um in regards to those i think the white ones or the light grays they tend tend to be elders if that makes sense all right well said well the next question is from christopherson and their question is do you think dogmen could get drunk or high from natural nature influences <laughs> oh i love it Boy, I tell you what, they'd have a heck of a time at my place. I'm an absinthe freak. That stuff hits at 136 proof. I'll get a moose drunk. <laughs> wow, that's heavy-handed. That really is. All right, the next question would be from Rappy. Oh, okay, I guess it's a comment about them being in Ireland as well. So take <laughs> that one down. And the next question will be from Christofferson again. And they want to know, is it possible for there to be crossbred hybrids of Sasquatch and dogmen? Um, 
that I would say probably not. However, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, one thing for everybody listening, uh, which might be interesting research. Um, look out, look out the the research that was done. There was a scientist back in the early 1910s, and his name was uh, I think it's Elia. Uh, Elvanov, Elvanov, I do believe it was, um, I, I killed the Russian. I don't speak Russian, but, uh, he started in, I think it was like the 1910s and then around, I think it was 1924. It was right around the time that Stalin took over. He did some pretty crazy stuff in the lab. And I, I do believe at that point he was actually trying to cross humans with some type of uh primate uh, of some sort. I think it was chimpanzee, but, uh, for research purposes and stuff like that, people should really check that out. And it, it put in a whole new perspective on stuff, especially now you're looking at a hundred years later. Yeah. Who knows what sciences can do now? Yeah. That's a lot of time for scientific advancement. So you're right. You never know what we could have come up with. All right. The next question is from C Phantom 19 and he says, or is asking, what would you recommend to do and not to do during an encounter? Well, uh, don't be a jerk. <laughs> be, you know, be respectful. Try to be as calm as you can. I mean, don't be a fool like I did and try to go and get, you know, walk up to one, you know, I like I did with that little one. Um, yeah, just don't, don't try to put out any type of aggressive attitude towards them. And then um, don't try to engage. Don't try to get closer. You know, don't be like one of those fools that wants to get a selfie with a bison out in Yellowstone or anything like that. Cause chances are end results would be the same. Just be, just be respectful and back up out of their area. They're, they're letting you know they're there for a reason. Well said. <laughs> this next one's more of a comment than a question. It's from Glades creature and, they say the dog or wolf head makes it no Bigfoot. Exactly. That's a really good point. All right. The next question is from, it's kind of a general question from Carl. He wants to know who would win in a fight, Dogman, Sasquatch, or Vic? I'm guessing Vic won. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All well, right. One... <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. After you. Yeah, you know, it's one of the comments one of the viewers made on this. Uh, something about Vic 10 years from now is going to be the first guy to interview a dog man. Yeah, I second that. That would be fantastic. You never know. Just might happen. <clears throat> I can see it. All right. The next question is from Brandon Whitehawk. And Brandon wants to know, do dog men have any known weaknesses or vulnerabilities? That um, I I don't know. Um, I think that would be more of a question for uh, the you know the full bore researchers that's gone out there and dealt with them. I mean, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. I, I I'm not not in any position to give an accurate answer with that. Oh, understandable. I mean, how could you? All you can do is guess on that. And when I mentioned be careful about the information that you you digest about dogmen, because there's a lot of bad information out there, I'm sure a Ken Act of Kindness isn't doing this intentionally. Maybe he just doesn't know, but I want to bring attention to this. He just made a comment saying, dog woman, six memory glands, Sasquatch or Bigfoot, only two, dead giveaway my guess. Well, understand, Ken, that there have been plenty of eyewitnesses, credible eyewitnesses, who have reported only seeing two mammary glands on female dog women that they've seen. Sometimes they're reported as having more than two, but you've got to be careful there. I'm not sure what you're using for a resource for information, but yeah, be careful what information you believe about these guys, because like I said, there is a lot of bad info floating around out there. If you hear somebody talking about dogmen like they're just a total resident expert, I mean, they can tell you how many hairs are, are on a dogman's right shoulder blade versus its left shoulder blade, then, yeah, be very suspicious about that. And there's a lot of that floating around, way too much of that. 
All right. Having said that, the next question is from Hans Barasho, and that question is, Middle Tennessee has extensive cave systems. Do you have any knowledge of cryptids utilizing cave systems in the Tennessee slash Kentucky region? Uh, me, no, I I don't have any knowledge of that. Again, I I believe that's more of a question for the researchers on that. Yeah, there are a lot of questions tonight that are best directed at dogman researchers. How could you know a lot of these these answers? But yeah, I mean, we've had some really good questions, a lot of really good questions tonight. So got to give the listeners credit. All right, moving on. This question's from Michelle Burns, and she wants to know, are their sexual organs more dog-like or human-like, such as two breasts for females and such? Now, as far as me, I was more, I was more of a, eye to eye contact or whatever i you know not to sound like a smart aleck i really really wasn't paying attention to their junk well yeah you had a lot more important things in your mind like <laughs> saving your own hide if you'd have any trouble like that so i get it all right <laughs> the next question is from mio di rio and that question is which encounter was most frightening to keep Man, it, 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 it's a tie. I mean, with the one that kind of crouched behind me when I was on that sled that, that had more of like the, the cat-like movements, that was spooky. Um, the one that kind of struck my soul a little bit was was that small one. It, the big ones, they I didn't think too much of them, but that small one saying, uh, come here or whatever it said, yeah, that was, you knew at that point Something was trying to lure you at that. Um, yeah, that one was kind of creepy, too. <clears throat> you still there, Vic? I am. Sorry about that. I was on mute there. <laughs> the next question is from Taser Survivor, and that question is, Keith, do you believe dogmen like kids over adults? Um, if I had to guess, and it's just a guess, I would say they like the kids, uh, over the adults because the, the kids are, they're, they're pure. They're, they're more kind than what adults are. You know, an adult sees it. Oh my God, let me go get my 12 gauge and put a hole in something. They, you know, that type of mentality with some people and. Yeah, I would say more of the kids, they are a little more keen on. <clears throat> All right. You just might be right. The next question is from Darren, and Darren wants to know, do you think they're revealing themselves to more people little by little? Um, that's that's a good question. I I think with the, uh, the natural ones, um, they may be or whatever, but this – in my my opinion, I think we're gonna start seeing possibly more of the uh, the GMO ones, and uh, I think we may see more of those. But I, I believe there's something in the Bible uh, that states something about near the end of days of uh, people will start seeing more bizarre creatures or whatever um, that could have something to do with it. But, you know, keep encroaching on their land. You're, you're going to find out something eventually. Yeah, that you will. All right. C Phantom 009 wants to know, Dogman seems to be every, everywhere around the globe. What would be your opinion on that? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Everywhere. It's just, a, you know, it's just a different name. It's kind of like the, uh, the Sasquatch stuff. You know, it depends on what what area you go to heck even in this country they got different names so yeah everywhere around the world um i don't get too much into histories of stuff but i, I do know that france has a pretty large history of uh, they got a lougarou or however they say that so yeah they're all over the place they've been around here probably just as long if not longer than we have <clears throat> wouldn't surprise me at all 
All right, the next question is from Stella Feral. And Stella wants to know, what is all the colors, or what are all the colors, dogmen? What are all the colors of dogmen that you saw? Did you see brown, black, or gray? Yep, <laughs> all of the above. I've seen those. Uh, and then sometimes you get a little bit of a mixture. Um, depends depends on, you know, whether or not it had like a main. Um, yeah, I've seen the brown, the black, the gray. And then the one, the, the small one that I saw out there in the Metro Park, and I know someone had made a question on this. So yes, was the answer to the person's question is the location. Um, that one had like the, the Auburn color hair, like the Irish setter, but just a shade or two darker. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen a handful of them and they, they're all in that same area. So I, I, I wonder if it has something to do with like a hierarchy or something. I don't know. I'm not sure, but yeah, I've seen a lot of different colors. All right. The next question is from Patrick Reagan, and he wants to know if dogmen can mimic animal and bird noises. Um, thanks. Now I'm definitely going to have my head on a swivel when I go back out in the woods. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> Moving on. The next one is, I guess it's a comment from Hom from Hans Baracho. And Hans says, Keith, come to Nashville. You'd love it. Uh, yeah, somebody must have been looking down at my bar in the basement. I got tons of different types of bourbons. I, lo I love that place. Like I said, Tennessee, I think we were out in uh, Fairfield Glade area the first time I went down there on my honeymoon a couple of years back and instantly fell in love with Tennessee, a beautiful place. <laughs> that it is. Has a lot to offer. All right, Bridget Nicole TV wants to know if a dogman actually got in the house. Um, for me, no, I haven't had. Luckily, I haven't had anything like that. Um, the only thing that we've had close was, I guess, that Skinwalker, freaky, weird-looking thing, and then um, that that large wolf that was just on the outside of our property line that that the wife saw, but nothing. Nothing in the house. It, I got enough stuff in the house to deal with as far as paranormal. I don't need something like that either. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness they haven't come in. Like you said, you have your hands full as it is. All right. Next one's kind of like a it's a question we've already covered from Mike Triple Seven. Yeah. He says, any reports of a dog man wearing human clothes? And yeah, there have been credible eyewitnesses reporting seeing that. Don't know what the story is behind that, but people have reported seeing them do that before for whatever reason. All right. The next one's from Hans Baracho, and he wants to know, what's the farthest distance that you know of that these animals have gone to track a victim? That's more of a, a generalized question there. And it's hard to say, really. All the people I've spoken with over the year, I can't really remember what the greatest distance was on that. So I don't know. All right. The next question is from Squatch Talks Podcast, and that is, how many of these dogmen has he seen? And how do you know if they are dog men, dog men or dog women? Um, man, I, I'd have to actually sit here and recount all of the times that I've seen these things. And, and again, I don't know. I can say I've seen four four dogmen or whatever the case is in this area. Heck, for as far as I know, it could have been the same one a couple times. I don't know. Now, as far as the females ones, the one that tried to get me to come closer, if I had to put any money on that one, that was a female because it, it had like a nine or 10 year old female child's voice. <clears throat> yeah, that's scary. All right. Next one's from Sam Hine 11. He wants to know if you've seen one with a mane. Yeah, actually, that was the one that I saw clearly. That was that sledding incident. That was in the first episode. That one had a, had a mane. It wasn't big and huge like a lion's mane would be or whatever. It's just, you know, a few inches longer than uh, the rest of its fur. It's That's fur. The main body fur uh, was 
fairly short. I mean, it wasn't short like a pit bull or anything, but it was fairly short. And that main, that was kind of creepy, yes, but it was kind of cool looking too because it ran about halfway down its back. It kind of tapered off into a V. That was that was pretty cool looking. <clears throat> I can think of a lot of a lot of other ways to describe that than cool. The fact that you said cool, I like that. That's great. That shows that you you weren't traumatized by that experience. And as long as you can say that, then that's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, All not right. until it got behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we can understand that, definitely. All right. The next one's from Hans Barasho, and Hans wants to know, do you know if ultrasonic dog deterrent devices have any effect on these animals? Um, that I wouldn't know, and I don't want to try because that would be the thing to take it off and rip me to shreds, and then I would be just become a memory at that point. But you know, maybe that's a uh, a, a question for the the researchers. Yes, that would be, and like you said, it's a good idea to to use some caution there. If you don't know how they're going to respond to it, why poke the bear? So yeah, I'm glad that. You know better than to try and do that. All right. The next question is kind of a, another general question from Tom Ondiek. And Tom wants to know, how do dogmen react to religious symbols? Well, I can't remember ever speaking with anyone who held up a cross or any other religious symbols out there. I can't really tell you on that. I have no idea. All right. The next one for you, Keith, is... That's more of a general question, again, from Christofferson. Do you think dogmen have personal beliefs, like an afterlife? And that, yeah, we have no way of knowing. No idea on that. So let's see. Yeah, Mike Colantonio, a.k.a. Long Island Bigfoot, he made a comment. He said, I've seen them up close, and I don't have good detail. Laugh out loud. I was too scared. <laughs> Yeah, you and a lot of other people as well. All right. So let's see. The next question would be, it's another general question. Do you think dogmen are stronger than humans on average? Well, yeah, definitely, Rex. That's Rex's question. Much stronger. All right. Let's look for a question for Keith. Let's see. Yeah, this one wants me to tell them the most violent encounter I've interviewed. Well, the show's about Keith, not me. So let's keep on looking and move on to the next question. Let's see. It's from Walter GSW. I've heard of dogmen in the desert states like New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. Do believe they are going into portals. I don't understand how they can go undetected there. So I guess that's more of a comment. And then let's see. It's from... Mike Colantonio from Long Island Bigfoot, he wants to know, do you believe they keep an eye on you now, now that they know you know about them? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I could see that. I mean, I would believe so in that, especially going out there in those uh, Dodge parks and everything like that and uh, state parks. Um, yeah, I could see that. I mean, they they may remember you like an elephant does. I mean, who knows? Um, yeah, I think they could remember you. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they can. All right, the next question is from D Truth, and his question is, well, first of all, I should say, hey, D Truth, how you doing? And then your question is, with their population growing, what do you think is their end game? Um. Population growing? I don't know if it is. I mean, they, you know, like I, I've said, back in this area where I've seen these, I haven't seen them in a while. So they could have moved. They could have been totally removed in a bad way. I don't know. And then what the end game is? I don't think they have an end game as far as the natural ones. Now the GMOs uh, that I, that we'll call them. Um, there's something not right with that, but you know, it's, I think that's more of a, uh, governmental type thing, not trying to sound too conspiracy weird or anything like that, but I, I got a feeling that 
over the next few years, we might see more and more of those. Um, good reference, that Manistee issue with that trucker that shot one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you see more. <laughs> yeah, we just might. We just might. Well, Keith, we're 90 minutes in, so I think it's time for us to call it. But before we do, do you have any comments you want to put out there for the listeners? No, not too, not too much. I just want to give, you know, a shout out to everybody and thank you coming to the, uh, the channel and listen to this. And uh, hopefully it helps out a lot of people, you know, and come to grips with things they may have seen it. Heck, it took me all these years to finally come out and uh, say stuff about it again. Uh, a, a special thanks to, was it Kim and Kai? Um, that was the final straw there with me finally deciding to come out and I appreciate those two, um, especially, but, uh, other than that, just, um, I want to say happy new years to everybody. Be safe, make it home. And, um, just remember being nice is just an obligation, but being kind comes from the soul. So everybody just be kind to one another and, uh, love one another. And let's all have a good next year. You're a good man, Keith. That's all well said, and I really hope you never change. And like you said, hope everyone has a great new year, and hope this year is even better than this last one was. But having said that, thanks again so much for coming on and answering all these questions. I really appreciate you doing that. And for everyone out there listening, all the listeners, thank you so much for listening to the show. I really do appreciate you doing that. And of course, I'll do the best I can to keep these episodes coming in and keep them out there for you to listen to. So, yeah, thanks again for listening, and hope everyone has a great night.